Hi, I'm Alex and welcome to Reader Rambles, a weekly podcast where I ramble about bookish topics and I help readers navigate life. I finally got a new laptop. I am recording from a MacBook that I saved up for and I am terrified of it. <laughs> I've been a PC user for all of my life and I always said I would never get one, but just for editing and just everything that I do, I realize that I need one and I enjoy it, but I'm scared of it because I don't know how to use it. Like I was just about to record and I was confused because it just wasn't recording the audio, but my fault because my microphone was muted, but I'm glad I got that all finished and figured out, but I'm still afraid of it. So I am going to try and get this up. I will just get into it. My week has been always, as always, it's crazy. So I am filming this on Saturday at four o'clock. I just finished up my Patreon watch party. We watched the half of it. It was really good. I enjoyed it and I had a lot of fun watching it with my patrons. Every month we do a monthly watch party in Discord. You can become a patron for a dollar and you will have access to our private discord and also a book club. So if you would like to join in on the fun and become a patron, the link is down below. You can pledge one dollar to have access to our discord, to our book club, and to receive episodes every Sunday. I got a laptop and of course because as you have heard through this podcast, my life never goes the way that it is supposed to. So I get the laptop on, I believe, was it Tuesday? I think I ordered it in store on Tuesday and um, they were like, it's going to come the next day. So of course, FedEx is horrible. So I wait and I wait the whole day in the living room and it doesn't come. And I'm working in the kitchen where I can like see the door and I get a notification in my email from FedEx saying that someone delivered it and already signed for it. And now here I am panicking because I'm like, oh my God, this is an emergency situation. My laptop has been just not working and I really need a laptop for work. So uh, I'm panicking and I try and call FedEx and just try and figure out what happened. And of course I get like an automated voice from FedEx. And so I didn't really get to talk to anybody. Um, and then I have to call Best Buy because that's where I got it. And then I'm just panicking the whole day because they say like, oh, well, the driver could have just put it in like that. Just wait till the end of the day. I wait until six, seven o'clock. It never comes. And so then I'm pissed off, like so angry because I'm like, what the fuck? Why? Why does that have to happen to me right now? Because I need this thing and I was already hesitant getting it because I just hate having to get new things and just having to get a new laptop is such a hassle. And so I was excited about this because I was like, cool, I've never had a Mac before. I'm excited. All of my friends have said they love theirs and I was finally excited to get it because I was just so nervous and then this happens and so I'm like why did I even get it like I'm so angry and like annoyed because like why does that have to happen to me right now because now I don't want to have to go through the week of not having a laptop and hopefully my laptop will survive because like a couple of nights ago I was watching hockey and then I went down to the kitchen and I came up and the screen was all static and I'm like, oh, oh no. And this was before I even got the laptop. So that was like my sign that I, I really need to get a new one. So I was like, I don't know how much longer my laptop is going to hold out. So can this just not happen today? Can we just not do that? Um, and then I go to sleep and I wake up in the morning at like eight o'clock and have to call Best Buy because they would send me a new laptop and I have to go to the store and get a new laptop. And then I call Best Buy and then get off the phone with Best Buy as they're going to send me to a new store. And then what happens? We look out the door. There's a package there. And we're like, what? It's my laptop. But the weird thing is that they didn't ask the sign for it, which made me angry because 
like what what happened there we don't know uh so the moral of the story is that I have my laptop now and I'm using it even though I'm still scared of it because I don't like I was having fun with it and I really do enjoy it but just having a new system that I've never used before is so daunting and hard but I've really been enjoying it we just watched the half of it with my patreon and I wasn't able to how my discord watch parties work is everyone goes into the watching voice channel and then we just like live react in the watching text so everybody's muted and then I share my screen and everyone can watch the film because I'm all about accessibility I'm not going to make you get Netflix just to watch and be a part because I don't want to do that and I have a small community so I can do that but the problem is that I couldn't have my headphones on while I shared it so I had to take my headphones off and just share it with like the desktop audio so I still need to just figure out how to actually use this <laughs> so I thought I was like fine until that all happened and I was a little bit annoyed but we got to watch it it was really good and so that's how my week has been going. I am also currently reading a couple books so I started the audiobook for Know My Name by Chanel Miller and I got it on Libby like from my library and oh my god it is amazing and I feel I don't know I always never really know how to talk about nonfiction because it's somebody's story I don't want to say like this kind of story is about a woman who was sexually assaulted and so I don't want to be like oh this is an amazing story because it's not it's a very brutal story but the way it's written is so good there are so many great quotes that I'll be able to pull from it um there's one specifically um I do want to get my notion up because that's what I had up but I might have no, I actually might have put it on the story graph. Here we go. So the quote is, I didn't know that my loss of memory would become his opportunity. I thought that was so good. So if you don't know this book, it is a nonfiction book and also narrated by the author Chanel Miller and there was the big case at Stanford with Brock Turner who sexually assaulted a woman who is Chanel Miller and she came out with a statement and said her story but it was anonymous so this is her publicly like coming out and sharing her story and sharing her name so that's why it's called Know My Name and it's just really an interesting story to hear her perspective which I really enjoy because we should hear her perspective um but I enjoyed it because well I've not done it but I'm enjoying it because it is narrated by her but also she's going through like all of her feelings during when everything came out and it's just a lot of like information that you didn't know from the page like I don't know if it was a page or like an essay but she just came out with her story and then we are actually hearing everything from her from the night it happened to uh I guess present day and it's really an interesting story and I'm really enjoying it and I can't wait to get back to the audio because it's pretty pretty good I'm like ca being careful with my words because I don't want to say it's like oh this is fantastic because it's really a horrible story a tragic story that should have never happened but it's a really good one I'm really enjoying it and that's all that I really had to say on it because I don't really know how to properly explain it because it is such a heartbreaking story but I do enjoy just hearing about her feelings and just what actually went on from what we didn't know and it's really good. Then last night I started the wedding date because I just want to keep reading because I just haven't been reading and I don't I still don't know why like I just haven't really been interested in doing that like I still haven't finished game on and I still haven't finished that I think just everything going on with the laptop and just with like a lot of other things that I just haven't had the motivation or energy to do it um but I'm kind of hoping that I'm coming back to it like I said I'm just doing quantity over quality but it's so hard to do that when booktube and everything is consumed by numbers 
like wrap ups are consumed by numbers. And let me just say, I didn't know that wrap ups were that popular because my January wrap up is doing very well. If you haven't watched it, I'll have a link down below, but you can subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to. Um, also, thank you to Emma from Drinking By My Shelf on her. I don't, it's not her channel, but she works for Book Break, which is another YouTube channel, and she shouted me out. So thank you so much to her for doing that. She did a video about reading goals and like what booktubers goals are, are for the year, and she shared episode one of this podcast. So thank you to Emma. I really appreciated that. And if you haven't seen that, it'll be up above in the cards if you're on YouTube. But if you're just on like Spotify or Apple Podcasts, you can just scroll and listen. But the wedding date is so good. Um, I'm not really surprised, but it is following Alexa Monroe, who is actually the younger sister of Olivia, who is the main character in Party of Two. And this is about her getting stuck in an elevator with a guy, and then apparently the wedding stuff comes in, and I'm really excited. I think if I just keep picking up books then, and like kind of reading sporadically, then hopefully this slump era will be over. <laughs> I don't even know what it is, but I think I, I don't know. It's like, I don't want to force myself to read and I don't want to say like that I don't like reading, but I've been kind of thinking about that lately where I was like, do I even like reading? Which I do, but I just don't know why I'm not like constantly doing it because I had a reading vlog I wanted to do this month that didn't happen and I just need to figure some things out. It's just, I say this every time, but it is hard to do videos when you're also like consumed with life things. Like, I know that like people who follow me don't really care, but to me, I care because as a small creator, it's like you want to build your channel and consistency is really important on YouTube. And when you can't be consistent because you have mental health issues and you also have a busy life and just can't catch a break it is hard to be consistent <laughs> but I know that there are people that will support me anyway but I'm loving the wedding date it's really good and with game on I am still enjoying it I just need to get into it more but I'm loving my laptop I just need to figure out how to actually use it I probably just need to watch like YouTube videos and stuff uh but I also have been trying to be a little bit more consistent on Instagram. If you don't follow me over there, I highly recommend it because that's where I talk a lot about books. I talk about trans stuff, trans sports, and I also give some content over there. I did my first reel. Oh my god, it was so hard. Like, kudos to everyone who does TikTok and reels for like not like a living, but like for fun because, oh my god, it was so hard. I watched a video from Katie Steckley and she was really great at doing a tutorial for it, but it was so hard. It was winter sports book recommendations for the Olympics and so I decided to just make it a reel instead of like a video. So I did that and it was so hard. <laughs> I was like, I don't know how people do this. Uh, I feel like I kind of talked about that in my TikTok video where I attempted to do some TikToks when I read books that were recommended to me by TikTokers, but oh my god, reels are so hard and I just feel like a boomer. <laughs> like sometimes I feel like that because I'm like, I don't know how to use this. It is so hard. Even though I watched a really good tutorial, I'll have it linked down below and it was awesome, but I think like everything, like obviously my first YouTube video was probably horrible, which it was, it was out of focus. And so I think just practice makes perfect, but just, I like editing on a laptop instead of like on my phone. I don't, I don't like texting on my phone or anything. I would just rather do it all on my laptop because it's a bigger, bigger keyboard, but that has been my week. That is what has been going on. And I feel like I'm kind of stalling because I don't really, it's not that I don't like this week's episode, but I feel like I don't have much to say on it. Uh, but because it's the month of love, I am going to talk about my favorite book tropes and things I love in books. I do have a YouTube video like this, so I'll link it in the cards and down below. But I, I don't know. I guess I'll just get into it. Uh, welcome to Rita Rambles, where I ramble. 
because that is really what we do here. I really enjoyed last week's episode, so if you haven't seen it or haven't listened to it, definitely recommend. It's one of my favorites. I realized that sometimes I just get stumped because I'm like, oh, I really like doing this podcast, but sometimes I don't know what I want to talk about. So if you ever have a topic you want to submit, you can submit it to this Google form that I have. So that's linked down below. And if you have any advice that you would like to get from me, or you have any problem and you want advice from me, please send some in. I'm trying to figure out what I should do in place of the advice segment because I haven't gotten much yet or I haven't gotten any yet. So if you want me to answer maybe a few questions at the end, or if you want me to do like a question of the day or something like that, I'm not sure, but let me know your feedback and let's get into the video episode not video. Okay, so this is actually going to probably be a more rambly topic because I don't have much planned. And if you're on video, I'm trying to like fix my, I'm trying to still figure out like what to do and where to film this because my room is very small. I don't have a lot of space. I might have to get like a tripod or something, but we're just working with what we have here basically. So today we're talking about my favorite book tropes and things I love in books. I do have a full YouTube video of this, so it'll be in the cards and down below in the show notes. So today I'm talking about my favorite book tropes and things I like in books. This is going to be more rambly because I don't have a lot planned. So I do have a YouTube video where I talk more in depth and give book recommendations for things I love in books. So that'll be down below and also in the cards if you're on YouTube and in the show notes if you're listening. You know the drill already, but let's begin. <laughs> so I, you probably already know this, but my biggest one is if it is queer and it has hockey. Give me that, please. My friend Asha Reed just sent me that he is reading Kiss and Tell by Adib Karam and is said that it is about this gay boy in a boy band, but he also was previously a hockey player. Sign me up. Sign me up. Please, if you ever have book recommendations for me, hit me up in the DMs because I I am always looking. So give me any book with hockey in it and I will read it. I will also link, I just saw an Instagram post and it was winter sports like romances and there was like a sapphic hockey romance. There's like a curling romance that's sapphic and there's also a goalie romance that is a male male romance and oh my god. I'm like, I am about to go on an ebook spray or like a book. I'm going to buy all of those books just because they sound so great. Uh, so I'll have that link too. Uh, I feel like I always have a really expansive show notes and description because I'm always like, hey, ever hear about this? I'll link it down below. Uh, but yes, give me any sports books and I will read them. I've said this before, but I love reading about sports that I don't know about. Like, I love Dragon Hoops, the graphic novel, because I never knew much about basketball. And then I was like, whoa, now I know a lot about basketball. Uh, so yes, give me any sports book and I'll read it. <laughs> if it's nonfiction, I'll read it. If it's fiction, I'll read it. I will honestly read anything. So I think that's like my main priority when it comes to books. But I also... Like I said, if it has an LGBTQ plus cast, characters, and even if it's like a main character or something like that, I will read that. <laughs> I have a review policy and so if you are a person that works in publishing or an author and you would like me to review, review your book, please check out my review policy because that is where I talk about everything that I accept. I don't accept sci-fi. I don't accept thrillers. I don't accept historical fiction. I don't accept anything that is not a contemporary book. I only read contemporary books and the occasional nonfiction and the occasional graphic novel, but I specifically review contemporary. I also love books about music. One of my favorite books is The Beauty That Remains. I am also looking here at On The Come Up because I have some books right here on my desk because I was going to use them as a tripod and then I realized that's not a good idea. 
But yes, I love books about music. If it's a band, if it is just about a musician, if it is about people that are just listening to music and going to a show, uh, there's a book by Liz Lawson. Uh, I can't really think of what it, the title is right now, the, the Lucky Ones, and it does feature people in a band and music and grief. So another topic I love is grief. I realized last year I didn't read a lot of books about grief, <laughs> which is very unlike me, but I feel like maybe I've just read them all, which is not true, but I read them pretty, pretty much. Like my two things that I'm known for, I feel like, is books about grief, contemporary books, and hockey. Uh, so <laughs> those are things that I love in books. I also really love books about theater. My favorite book is Between Perfect and Real. I'm writing a high school musical retelling. I've been thinking about it lately that I might like go through it and revise, not revise it, but just reread it and see what needs to work because I've been kind of doubting myself with it. Even though I know my friend who literally has a PhD in theater, she would help me with it. I'm just a little nervous because I'm like, oh, I feel like this kind of sucks. I also really need to go back into my revisions for Breaking the Ice. I'm hoping to do it this month. Like I said, the start of 2022 has just been a stress ball for me and it's just been like not very consistent. There's just been a lot of things going on and I just feel like I just can't stay on track. So hopefully revisions will come because I have been thinking about my book and now that I have it on my laptop and all I feel like the major thing was my laptop was such a big issue and now it's not so that's amazing um what else do I really like in books I like I said I love theater I love anything that has queer or LGBTQI plus themes also if there's trans characters or it is following a trans protagonist but I do kind of stay wary of that sometimes because sometimes I just kind of use books as an escape and I need to be in the mindset to read a trans book. But if you want more recommendations, go over to my YouTube channel. I recommend books so often. I feel like this, I'm going to try and make sure this doesn't turn into like a book recommendations episode because I feel like I just recommend books so much that... I don't know. I feel like I've just been kind of having like an existential crisis with myself and my channel because I'm just like, oh my god, I feel like I recommend the same books all the time. And if I'm not reading, then what's the point of film of making booktube videos? Because it's just hard. It's really hard when you're not reading or you're not in the mood to read because like I just want to play The Sims and I just want to talk about The Sims and I want to wallow about my hockey team. That's super bad. My hockey team sucks. We just lost. We just lost. <laughs> we won two, and then and now we're just now we just lost two again. So we came off of a thirteen game losing streak, and let's let's do it again, shall we? Also, I haven't really been watching the Olympics that much because hockey is on at like the worst times. It's either on at six in the morning when I'm asleep, or at eleven p.m. when I'm probably also asleep or I'm watching YouTube so it's it's hard <laughs> so I'll just watch the highlights um the USA men's team just won last night so that was pretty good or maybe this morning I should say um what do I like in books oh I love letter format I love dialogue like I've talked about in my I think it was like how I could became a reader episode. I talk about how I struggle with reading comprehension and just reading in general, which could also be a factor into why I haven't been reading. But I just tend to skip over lines and I just want to read the dialogue because I'm like, oh, well, no, I want to know what they're saying. I am a fanfic reader and writer, so I'm all about the dialogue. <laughs> I just always want to read dialogue and that's totally fine um but I love epistolary format which if you don't know is like letter format um to Simon vs. Homo Sapiens Agenda so fun I feel like I want to write a book like that one day um I think like my college book I wanted to make like that a little bit I love books that are like that especially if they're like written in prose or something like that 
short books are my favorite thing. Like, I think Game On is taking so long because it's 448 pages or something like that. I actually say in my video, you're learning how long it takes me to read a 400 page book because it's taking forever. I, I don't even think Awful Night was that long. Like, I don't mind because it's a really fun book, but it's hard to like read on my iPad because I don't have to charge it. Sometimes I really like physical books. Maybe I'll do a whole episode on that, physical over ebooks, or I don't know. Maybe I won't do that because I read anything, but sometimes I prefer a physical book. I read any type of format, but sometimes it's hard to read certain formats because I will get so used to reading physically and then I'll want then I'll be on like an audiobook kick then I'll be on an ebook kick and I just can't have a mul I can't like multitask like that where I need to be reading all physical books or I need to be reading all audiobooks or all ebooks so that that's that um I really also enjoy fake dating one of my favorite tropes like I am so excited for the wedding date even though I don't think it's a fake dating I just think it's so fun like they got trapped in the elevator and now I'm just curious to see what happens next I love Jasmine Guillory for that because she is an author that makes me like really invested I think that's also why game on is taking a while because it's short stories so it's kind of like you have to stop and then read the next stories um what else? <laughs> I'm not going to apologize because this is Reader Rambles. It's what you signed up for, but short chapters. I love short chapters, even though, no, actually Breaking the Ice has five pages each chapter. It's like five to eight pages each chapter. And sorry to my video people because I'm just fixing the video. Um, I, I love me some short chapters, <laughs> uh, but I do love audiobooks. I love when an audiobook has a full cast. I always say how I love audiobooks because they're like a different kind of art where you're experiencing a story in such a different way. Um, I love, I don't know, I feel like that's kind of like the gist of what I like. I like books about hockey, I like books about sports, if you're giving me a book with a queer or LGBTQI plus character, sign me up. Um, I love contemporaries with dark topics, so hard, hard hitting and dark contemporaries are my favorite. I'm an emo kid at heart, I've always been, and it has never left my system ever. It was not a phase. <laughs> I hate that I did not really organize for this episode because I didn't really love the topic because I feel like I've already done it before, but I also still think it's fun to talk about. I should have prepared more for this episode. I apologize. I have just had so much shit go on this week with the laptop and all that I wasn't even going to record this week, but I still wanted to because I love my podcast. It's fun, but sometimes you have to not do that. <laughs> I am going to go through my Goodreads and just look through it and talk about what I like and that's what we're gonna do. Uh, I actually do like nonfiction books. I read them pretty often and I have a lot on my TBR. Graphic novels are really good too. I really enjoy them. Oh my god. Um, I- this is such a niche favorite but I love books set in apartments. I was just looking at Lucky Caller and that is what made me think of that. I don't know why, but I just love books set in apartments. <laughs> I don't know why, but they're just fun to read because I, I don't know, like that or like hotels. Um, I don't know if it's like nostalgia or just like the environment is fun because I feel like you don't really get many books like that. Um, but I do enjoy... Oh, I'm thinking of P.S. I Like You by Casey West. That book is about like an anonymous lover or something like that, where this girl writes song lyrics and she writes them on her desk at school and then someone finishes them. It's such a fun book and I love that. Give me more books like that. Like I said, I love books about music and I just love 
books that have that kind of trope. I like romance books, I like contemporary, and I also like, I, I don't want to say like books about video games, but if the character likes video games, then I will enjoy that. <laughs> um, I don't know. I feel like I might be done with today's episode. I'm sorry if it sucks because I don't really know what to talk about because I don't know. I feel like I don't like- I'm not very picky when it comes to books. I just don't read fantasy and I don't read sci-fi because my brain cannot control that. <laughs> my brain cannot con- oh my god. My brain cannot comprehend world building. So I just like to read contemporary graphic novels. I thought of another thing that I love in books. Baking. I loved Tuala Buzilla before. It's one of my favorite series. I talk about that in the book adaptations episode. And I love when characters bake. There is a romance that I just saw. And I think it's called By... I don't know. It's not By the Recipe. It's... What is it? I'm gonna look it up right now. I just, remember I added it. But it's a romance about baking... It's not that new one that just came out. This one is apparently coming out. Love and Other Disasters is one that I need to get to, but that's not the one I'm talking about. The Romance Recipe. It is a sapphic book. We also have Fake It Till You Bake It by Jamie Wesley. That's the one. I really want to read that one. And it sounds really good. I love books about baking. There is Mangoes and Mistletoe by Adriana Herrera. It's a really good novella. My camera is going to die very soon, so you might not get the audio. You might not get the video for the rest of this episode. I just charged it and now it's saying it's dead because that's just what happens in my life. Um, I really do enjoy books about baking. They're really fun. The Heartbreak Bakery I know is going to be really good. And I think that has recipes in it, so I'm excited. I love baking, so I love those kind of books. Check Please is my favorite because it has baking and hockey and also has, like, social media. I love when social media is involved, especially, like, if it's about a YouTuber, like, a vlogger, because I, like, we love that representation. <laughs> and that is kind of it. I like that. I apologize if today's episode was so rambly. I feel like I'm just underprepared. I've had such a stressful week and I really wanted to get this up and then I'm going to have to edit it. So that is it for this week's episode. If you ever want to submit a topic for me to talk about, the form is down below. If you missed last week's episode, you can go and listen to that. And if you are on Spotify, you can rate this podcast so you can give it out of five stars. So I would really appreciate if you do that. And if you're on Apple Podcasts, please leave a review. I would really appreciate it. And if you want to become a patron, that link is down below. I will see you next week with a new episode. And I don't know what next week's episode is going to be. So let's see, because usually I tell you. So let's see here. Oh, I might talk about my favorite books. I'm not entirely sure yet, but if you do have any suggestions for me to talk about any given topic that you would like, and if you have any suggestions for what to do at the end of the episodes, because I haven't gotten any advice yet, which I totally... I'm cool with. I know I don't have a very big audience, but also if you don't have anything you want my advice on, I also understand that as well. Thank you for listening and I will see you next week. <laughs>